Let you a message about something that is happening right now yes. while you're sitting in this auditorium. It's in CERN, Switzerland. Now, you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider, and it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago and is still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. I cannot and will not attempt to speak as a physicist. It would make me look like a fool. My purpose this morning is to try to be a liaison between them and you. It's to try to take what's going on in that collider and break it down to where I can understand it and I can give it out so you can understand it to where it makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from what's called a theoretical physicist. This man, his name is Stephen Hawking. He's well known throughout the world. Anyone that has anything to do with nuclear energy or has anything to do with physics knows this man and he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein and uh, of that level and so I want to read to you what this man has to say about what's happening right now in CERN Switzerland listen carefully these are the words of Stephen Hawking he recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said, the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, and I'll give you what they're trying to do in a moment, what's happening at this very minute in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. This is a theoretical physicist. Now, physicists come in all kinds of sizes. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has also sounded the alarm in a hypothetical manner by telling anyone who might want to blow up a planet how to do so is this CERN's attempt to do so by attempting to recreate the Big Bang within a man-made structure. This has frightened Stephen Hawking so much. Do they know that they know that they know what they are doing? And that's sort of the stage we're at right now. We're getting closer and closer. We think it looks very much like the Higgs, but we're not sure yet. We need to get a little bit closer to be absolutely certain. Ask yourself. How much energy is keeping it together? Neil deGrasse Tyson told co-host Eugene Merman on his Star Talk radio show, then you put more than that amount of energy into the object, it will explode. Now, now I think I've got your attention. I've quoted two physicists. These are scientists. These men do not agree with what's happening in CERN, Switzerland right now. There is a 17 mile long accelerator that lies 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. So part of this accelerator is located in France and part of it in Switzerland. It is a joint European project. The United States of America is there as an observer. But the, but the brain power that's going in to this experimentation originates in Europe. They are attempting to recreate what they believe happened that brought all of this into existence as being the Big Bang. Now you and I know from the book of Genesis chapter number one that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He spoke it into existence. They are finding things, and this is what's important for us to understand today. They are discovering things that they did not expect to discover. 
as they get deeper and deeper into this, uh, into this experimentation and uh, development and research and so forth. They are beginning to find out that there is a whole lot more to the creation than they had ever given thought to before. They're beginning to find out that there's something going on here that boggles the human mind, that literally blows us apart when we try to even comprehend what's happening. This 17 mile long underground tube that is uh, located there in Switzerland has I think four or five different points where they collide with some say protons and maybe something else, but particles that are being moved at or above the speed of light inside this collider. Now for your information, there is one near us in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, but it is not nearly as large as what we're dealing with here. And apparently the larger the collider, the more speed that they can attain and the more they're able to get deeper into what they're looking for. They're looking for the very building blocks of what brought all of this together. To give you an analogy, let's say you have a house. You observe that house, it's beautiful. You think, my goodness, let's see how this is put together. And so you start taking the house apart and you expect to find nails, but instead you find glue. That fascinates you that much more because you find glue holding this house together, you wonder to yourself, what was this glue like before its hardened state? Because you see, once the glue glues the things together, it hardens, solidifies. They want to know what the glue was like in its liquid state. So they're going through this to go back to that point to where they can separate and find out what this was like then. And by doing that, of course, they can build on the information and knowledge that they attain. Now, what's going to follow on the message this morning is the implications of what's going on. But let me give you just a little bit of what has been happening. Where they have done this experimentation, strange things are happening, unexpected by the scientist. Paranormal phenomena, they like to call it apparitions, ghosts, all kinds of demonic spirits are beginning to manifest themselves in waves. Here we have in CERN, Switzerland, a huge wheel. Inside that wheel is a Hindu God and his name is Shiva. He does a dance of destruction inside that wheel and his purpose is he is one of the triad gods, one of the greatest gods of Hinduism, Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. Brahma is the god of creation. Vishnu is the god of preservation, but Shiva is the god of destruction. The way the Hindu sees it is that when Shiva destroys, it's not for the purpose of annihilation. He destroys so that Brahma can come and recreate. So now when the Hindu sends their scientists to CERN, they put this out there in front. And so what these people are doing with the collider is destroying what comes together, but for the purpose of recreating and find out what brought it into existence to begin with. Are you following me? Now here we have men that are scientists on an average of an IQ of anywhere from 160 to 200 or even above. These are some of the smartest brains in all the world. No, no question about it whatsoever. I pick up physicists and try to read some of this stuff. I think, good night. Forget me. That's for, a, that's for a brain that is wired that way. No question. But we were told when Darwin's theory of evolution came out and became vogue, that it would destroy the foundations of Christianity. And this old book that we hold in our hands, this old outdated Bible would no longer be relevant. And a lot of people bought into it because after all, Darwin is scientific. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world that are becoming very religious because here they've got Shiva, they've got dances to Shiva, 
and they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they're finding things. Let me give you one example. In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see. They didn't fit in any model. They didn't fit anywhere. They don't belong, but they, they could not deny the reality of it. Something was going on inside there that they could not explain. And it was scary for them. For the scientist has his paper and his pencil and his books. And if it doesn't fit in his paper and his pencil and his books, it's out the window. They don't understand. They have a hard time accepting the fact that there is a spirit world out there. That spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting who put in me what I am today by the power of Almighty God and by the power of the new birth. But a scientist like that will never admit that because that takes it out of his control and his power. He's got to be able to, he's got to, be able to demonstrate his theory and put it into motion. But anyway, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to leave this with you. I want you to think about what I'm saying. Stephen Hawking, and a theoretical physicist, has warned these people, you are about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot put, Pando you cannot put back in what came out of that box. Now let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on. I think I'm trying to lay a foundation for you to get you to understand what we're dealing with. So the house, you take it apart and you see the glue and you find it in its hardened state. And then you want to find out what can I do to bring this back to its original state? And then what can I learn from that? So you've got to be able to take it back. You've got to be able to go back. You've got to move through time. That's what you're doing. You're moving through time. This is what it's about. They want to know what that matter was like before it came into its present form. They must determine what holds it together. They must break down the element and see what holds it together. Now, folks, if you know your Bible, you know what's holding it together. This, this, this is a big deal to these people. What's holding this together? The Bible says all things are uphold or withhold, upholded by the word of his power. A word is a spiritual thing. You can never put it under a microscope, but it's real. Who sealed you until the day of redemption? The Holy Ghost. Who put life inside your soul? Where your heart is set on fire when you read his word and pray? The Holy Ghost. Who would in this house would deny this morning the reality of a spirit being that saved you and wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life and indwelled you right now? But they want to know. They want to find out. CERN allows them to examine particles in their initial state, not after it's bonded together. So what has come from CERN? Now listen carefully what I'm going to say to you. I'm not going to, this is not exhaustive, but this is what I've gotten so far. What has come out of this? They have a list of their accomplishments, their achievements, and all of that. That's all well and good. But one thing for certain is what's called antimatter. How many's ever heard of antimatter? Antimatter. Now, if you'd asked me two weeks ago what antimatter was, I'd have said, well, it's matter, it's against matter. Hmm. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start, where to end, where I was if I got there. Let me tell you what antimatter, some of the characteristics of it. There are those that believe that for everything in the universe that is matter, that there is a corresponding antimatter. Corresponding. That there's a connection between the two. That matter, for example, take a piece of wood. It's matter. This is matter. This is matter. 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 It's something physical or it's something real, all right? If you act upon it, act upon that matter, it can burn wood, for example. You've acted upon it, but you've had to act upon it. You've had to do something to cause the wood to burn. Antimatter, on the other hand, is a very unstable thing that does not need to be acted on. Unless you do something to contain it, it's going to burn. It's very volatile and it is very, very, very uncertain as to what all it's capable of doing. Antimatter is a product 
of this experimentation in CERN, Switzerland. Antimatter is coming from it. Antimatter is so powerful that one man says that one grain, one grain of antimatter is the equivalent of four atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima. I got on the internet, did a little research, and I found out, they call it Little Boy, the first bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, then later on the one on Nagasaki. I thought, what was in that bomb? What exploded? You know, we understand nuclear fission and all these other big terms. We understand some kind of a nuclear reaction took place. Everybody knows that, right? Some kind of a nuclear reaction took place. But then I got to digging a little deeper and I said, now, what was in there? And from what I can find out, it was no more than from 9 to 13 grams of something inside their matter that exploded. And so I have to understand their scale. What are you talking about? You're talking about a handful? It doesn't sound like much to me, does it? In other words, the bomb that exploded at Hiroshima, when they split the atom, when they released the energy from the atom by the process they used, are you telling me that there was no more there than what would be a handful? I'm not saying I understand all that, but I want you to think about it for a minute. If no more than a handful of this material, this matter, that's what you'll get if you look on Wikipedia and some of these research, it'll say matter. It'll say eight to 13 grams of matter was used to explode and release energy and heat. And I would imagine, I don't know their scale, I don't know. In other words, is their gram the is same as a gram of, 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 of peanuts, a grain of uh, peanuts or something, or is it, is it a different scale? I don't know. But it wouldn't seem to me to be a whole lot to begin with. So if that did that, one grain of antimatter is the equivalent of four of them. How much is one grain of antimatter? They say it takes a long time to produce a single pound of antimatter. But now because of their technology and what they're doing at CERN Switzerland, that they can produce this stuff much quicker. And they're beginning to produce antimatter. When they produce antimatter, strange things happen. They took some of it and they put it in a college. They won't name the college and for reasons I understand. And the college had the facilities to contain it. Antimatter has to be contained. So they put it in a college <coughs> to contain it. Strange things started happening at the college. People started hallucinating, having visions. People were going wild. All kinds of crazy stuff was happening. Apparitions. In plain words, there's a connection between this stuff and the spirit world. Now, don't you think for a minute. Don't get ahead of me. Just think. The Bible said, He that letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. God Almighty is going to let them go so far, but he's not going to go any further. The spirit world, folks, is not affected by the physical. Demons, all this other stuff, probably couldn't care less whether you've got matter or antimatter. It's a spirit being. But to fit into the great deception that's coming and it's coming and it's about here right now. I mean a deception like this world has never known before. To fit into this great deception, they can sure draw these men in to make them think that because they have reached this certain point in their scientific analysis, that they're bringing in these spirit beings. It'll make true believers out of them, but it'll do more than bring two, make true believers out of them. NASA said just a few days ago, NASA, they said just a few days ago that by the year 2020, that we will definitely come in contact with aliens, beings from another planet. Now we're talking about scientists. 
We're talking about Darwin's crowd. We're talking about the crowd that threw the Bible out and said it's old, archaic, anachronistic. It doesn't belong today. We're talking about that bunch. We're too smart for the Bible. We're scientists. Yet this crowd is saying that in just a few years that they're going to know that they know that they're going to come in contact with alien beings. I thought to myself, my, 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 my. You boys, have you already, have you always known that? That you've got a certain date set? And what you think is an alien being is really a demon? There are no aliens out there, folks. Forget that stuff, okay? There's nothing out there. You get into the third heaven, you get into the abode of God. There's nothing up there. All these UFOs, spacecraft, flying saucers, all this stuff, that's all demonic. It's real, but it's demonic. It's not real like we understand reality, but it's really real. <laughs> it's demonic. I see a great deception beginning to develop. Yeah. Yeah. That in their analysis and in their laboratories that they believe in, that they've got their heart and soul tied up in, little things begin to show up, stuff that they can't explain, that sucks them in to begin to understand, well, maybe this is, a, this is being affected, it's being acted upon by something that we don't understand completely. And this spirit being that comes from out there, that comes down to this world, they accept with open arms because they're willing to put Shiva out there dancing around in the cosmos and destroying and then bringing a new creation in. Here are these wise, smart, brilliant men. And they're willing to believe that there's something more than what can be measured in a microscope and can be put in a petri dish. That there's something going on and you better believe there is. There's something going on. Now in the spirit world that I just preached to you about, you can see that. Now what about the physical world? Let's go back to Hawking for a minute. He said, remember, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in spirits. He's a dialectical materialist. He's a Bolshevik. He believes that what they're liable to do here in CERN, Switzerland, is unleash the gates of hell. It's really good. Tied, he will be thrown.